elders, leaders, members of the cabinet, good morning. Speaking about and on the legacy of former President Janet Jagan can be very simple this morning. I just have to refer to the audience here and you will see two former presidents, former members of the cabinet, leaders of the PPP, a sitting president, and a number of other individuals and leaders in civil society who can be easily recognized as part of the legacy of Janet Jagan. This is her legacy. She built a party that stands today as strong as ever, and one that has delivered so many presidents and leaders to Guyana, and her legacy can be wrapped up in this output. When you look at individuals and you think about their legacy, you look at what output is there. And in this audience alone here, this very small audience, because of the restrictions on the pandemic, this could have been a very huge event. You can see so many leaders who are output are part of the legacy she built in the PPP, and I think we ought to give that a resounding round of applause. In this life for her eternal home on the 28th of March, 2009. She, however, has left behind a legacy which immortalizes her in history. Janet Jagan was a torchbearer for freedom and democracy. She devoted almost her entire adult life in struggling for Guyana's freedom and the restoration of democracy. Despite the daunting challenges she and her party faced during those struggles, she was never phased or discouraged. She believed in the righteousness and justness of her cause and its inevitable triumph, she pursued this cause to the very end. Janet Jagan imbued her party with her fighting spirit. It was her example of resilience and resistance that her party used during the period from March to August of this year, when there was a criminal conspiracy to steal our elections. Inspired by her tenacious spirit, her party resisted the attempts to deny the democratic will of the people. I believe that she would have been most proud that democracy, a cause to which she dedicated her life, had triumphed. And we have to give all those persons who stood up and defended the legacy of these persons, Governor Janet, Chetty, and all those who fought for democracy, the young people who ensured that tradition continue deserve a resounding rounds of applause from all who are present here. <laughs> Janet Jagan's life was one devoted to the rights of others. As a young woman, she rebelled against stereotypes, which confined women to certain roles in society. In the United States, she identified and empathized with those who suffered discrimination on the grounds of ethnicity, class, or nationality. Janet Jagan was a fearless pioneer of women's rights. She founded the Women's Political and Economic Organization, the forerunner of the Women's Progressive Organization. The former president of Guyana was in the vanguard of the struggles for women's rights and equality, both here in Guyana and elsewhere globally. Janet Jagan was a champion of the working class. All of her life, she identified with the workers of this country. Their struggles became her struggles. Their struggles became her struggles. Her efforts contributed to the uplifting of all of their conditions. Janet Jagan fought for a fairer and more equal society. 
She used the political offices held in various times to work particularly for the improvements of workers and for workers' rights. And for workers all across this country, we need to remember and recall the various struggles and sacrifices of Janet Jagan in defending their rights and importantly, in ensuring that they, have le that they had legislative backing to secure their rights. And we should put our hands together for her work with the workers. During her stint as minister with responsibility for health, labor, and housing, she led the passage of many legislation which reduced the hours of work for store workers and extended protections for domestics. She helped to establish housing for the working class families and extended primary health care. She was a trailblazer on the path to Guyana's liberty. First, from the stranglehold of colonial rule, and later, from the vice like grip of dictatorship. When she joined her husband, Dr. Chetty Jagan, in Guyana, she threw herself on the political front lines, helping to reignite the struggles for national unity and national, liber national liberation. Her contributions to the nationalist struggle and to attainment of political independence is one worth celebrating. And again, we need to put our hands together for her, her work that led us to political independence and ensure democracy is with us today. Her role in mass political mobilization is without question Janet Jagan was a founder of the Political Affairs Committee and later the People's Progressive Party, galvanizing popular support against colonial rule and for political independence. In the dark days, when our electoral democracy was under siege, our economy went into decline and fear and political intimidation loomed large. Janet Jagan stood beside her husband, her party, and the working class in fighting for democracy. It was a long period, lasting 28 years, a struggle which would have broken a lesser person, but to the end, she remained strong and resilient. We remember her at this time for her strong will, her indisputable political organizational skills and her dedication to the ordinary man and woman. Remember her at this time because she would have been proud that democracy was protected and preserved. Time magazine, as you have heard, heralded her as one of a great rebel in human history placing her, her alongside some of the world's most noteworthy but controversial women. It is no mean feat to be listed in such company. Despite her iconic status, Janet Jagan remained one of the most modest and humble person you could have ever met. She was extremely affable. I would never deny an audience with a citizen from the humblest of backgrounds. Anyone could walk off the road and meet with her. Janet Jagan was, a, was kind to a fault, giving away much of her earnings to others in need, including persons who were total strangers to her. She gave generously and consistently of what she had. A not well-known fact was how much of her money she gave away. Janet Jagan was warm and motherly. She had a special affinity for children, publishing a number of children's books. This showed her softer side, which re she retained, despite the intimidation which she suffered as a political activist. She related a story to a famous writer about being trailed one day while she was taking her son to school. After she had dropped him off, 
to school, with her maternal instincts, she looked back and saw him looking at the person who was following her. Even her impressionable child had recognized the dangers which she faced in, si in simply taking him to school during a troubling period of our country's history. She was a strong advocate for press freedom. In her time as editor of the Thunder and the Mirror newspaper, she campaigned tirelessly against censorship and other restrictions on press freedom. I've had the great fortune of knowing her and benefiting from her wise counsel. I consider it a humbling experience to assume the seat of the presidency which this political giantess once filled. Janet Jagan's achievement are not only monumental, but immeasurable. But the greatest of these were two which constitutes our outstanding legacy to this country, freedom and democracy. And this we must protect with all our strength, all our character, freedom and democracy must forever be protected. Before I close, I want to appeal to all of them. In the spirit of all those who came before us, those who are still with us, that it is time we stop reflecting in an empty way. The time has come for us in this country to reflect with honorable intentions, to reflect with a passion and a commitment to achieve what those who struggle selflessly wanted to achieve. And that is the unification of our people. It is the most pressing issue for us as a people. We talk a lot these days about the economic bonanza and that will come, about the great wealth that will come, about lifting our people from poverty. But today I say to you, the greatest of tasks and challenge for all of us is the unification of our people. And this does not rest on the people out there. This rests entirely on the shoulders of leaders. We cannot lead without dignity. We cannot lead in a way that is disrespectful to the laws of our country. Today, I ask all of them, especially within our political landscape, to assume individually and collectively the role of achieving the unification of our people. And I assure you, every single day of this government life will be spent dedicating to this task. It will be achieved. It must be achieved. We have to break down the invisible walls of this unity and bring our people together. We owe this to the legacy of those who work tirelessly and selflessly. We owe this to our future generation, and we have to fix it now and fix it in this generation and do not leave this burden upon those who will come after us. So today, as we reflect, I ask us to reignite in ourselves that spirit. That spirit that saw us victorious so many times in our country. We are best, we are at our best when we are united. That is when we are at our best. Today, we commemorate 
the centenary of her birth. We mark this auspicious anniversary with the issuance, issuance of this commemorative stamp. It is a small gesture for a woman who believed in the goodness and greatness of small things. Thank you very much, and God bless you and your families.